I don't know why we're recording with that. I just want to preface this with, I don't believe that any of what we're saying is going to be recorded. <laughs> yeah, probably not. But we can make it look good. For those out in television land, can you please introduce yourself? I am John McEntee from Incantation. I don't personally believe that anyone cares who Beelzebub is, but I would like to tell people in television land that I always tell people that if anyone says he or she knows me and respects me, that person does not know me. And could you please explain that? Because you've known me since the beginning. Yeah, you've done quite a few dumb things that I remember in your time, but um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, do they? I don't know. What the fuck you want me to say? You want me to say? Well, you, I would like you're, you to. You're an asshole. Is that what you want? To I hear? would. I would like <laughs> you to first of all tell people that you don't like any of my movies, anything that I've ever done creatively, and that the reason why you and I met is you came to my radio station because you hated what I was doing to metal. Yeah, that's that's really true. Yes, I never liked any of the Liquid Farhead music. Uh, Welcome to My Anus and a few other songs. I never was, there was my thing. Um, yeah, the movies, I mean, at best, they kind of sucked. No, at the best, they sucked a lot. But I did watch the one, the ones in like the, I don't know, the little uh, fields over by Route 46 or wherever it was. I can't remember exactly. Or the, the mountainy area thing. But anyway, um, yeah, and I used to have to go to the um, radio WMSC because they used to have a really good um, metal like show on all day on Saturdays and then one year you came in and fucked it all up so I felt it was my duty to like bring metal back to the, the North Jersey area I really don't believe that the recording can differentiate between us in the background but uh, <laughs> could you describe your origins you were in the band Revenant. Yes. When you came to my radio show, you were in the band Revenant. Yes, I was in the band Revenant when I came to the show. I even think I remember bringing like some Revenant stuff with me and also I thought I'd look for the, the cheesiest songs I had because that would be my way to get in to maybe play something good. I remember bringing in uh, some Mr. Mis Bungle when they were like metal, and I think I played Ava Brought in Vomitorium, um, was it The Murderous Clown, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I mean, um, at that time it was like, you know, what you're playing was just a disgrace to the underground, so I figured I could try to uh, do my part. And I, you were a little bitchy at first, but at the end, you actually were pretty happy. Let me just add a disclaimer. I loved Candlemas, and you had to get permission from your metal mentor to tell that it was cool to like Candlemas. No, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that easy. Um, I, I never really gave Candlemas a good listen until a Chris Reaver from Autopsy played him for me because I just thought if, if Bill Bill's about plays it, it's automatically gay. Well, speaking of vomitorium, I also want to say that you introduced me to old lady drivers with supermarket monstrosity. Okay. Well, you introduced me to vomitorium and they had a song Murderous Clowns, and I put it on one of my uh, Grimoire yeah, I CDs. That. Yeah, I remember. And would you believe that, uh, I hope you don't get mad at me. I don't care. But I put it on a CD because I was thinking like, I can't find the band Vomitorium. And I put Murderous Clowns on a Grimoire compilation. And I was handing them out at one of those Jack Costume festivals in New Jersey, the Marshmallow Meltdown. Yeah. 
guess what? I handed it to a guy from Vomitorium who was there. He said, what the fuck is this? And I said, oh, John McAfee said I could use this. <laughs> that sounds like something you would do. Um, yeah, actually, that, that Murderous Clown demo, I, I got it from Jim Stanek. I can't take credit for it myself. But, um, yeah, I, you throwing me under the bus, of course. That's part of the, that's part of knowing you. Yeah, that's what I do. Um, <laughs> uh, there, there were other, wait, you have some fans. One thing that I never became clearer on or about okay. is uh, your transition from Revenant to Incantation. Okay, well I quit Revenant and I started Incantation. <laughs> Was it because you were anti-Semitic? How did you figure that out? <laughs> No, it, um, it was pretty simple. I just didn't want to play in Revenant anymore, so I said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna split." And Paul Lenny was a was an, a freak, and he played in a cool, all possessed style. And I said, "Fuck it, this is a lot more fun than playing technical death metal or technical thrash or whatever we were playing in Revenant." And uh, if I may be so bold as to ask. Was Incantation originally not very serious? I, I don't know if it was not necessarily serious. Nah, it was, it was always kind of serious, but it was... The main thing was we wanted to have a good time and just tell people to fuck off. But even though it's more serious now, I guess, we still like just play metal and tell people to fuck off. So it hasn't really changed a lot. We're just more serious about telling people to fuck off and more serious about playing metal. But back then, I was just doing it because I just wanted to have fun and fucking do what I wanted to do. And it was kind of just like, fuck off. We want to play fucking death metal and, you know, be assholes. And Paul Lenny was a per per perfect person to be an asshole with, you know? Two more questions. Hey, two more questions if you're paying attention. No, they're not paying attention. They're only doing it. Yeah, what? No one can hear nothing. Don't worry, just go. Well, well uh, <laughs> what made you take on the vocal duties of the band? Because we needed a vocalist. Did you, as the stories say, jump over a table and attack the people from Relapse? Hey. I want to say yes, but it was like we both kind of jumped at each other. It was Bill Yurkevich and um, and me. He just, it was so great because he hated me so much, but he loved my music. And I remember he used to get so pissed when he would hear our new stuff and enjoy it. He, he called me up and he, I remember one time he called me up and he said, I wanted so much to call you up and say this fucking sucks, but it fucking rules and I fucking hate it. And he's like, it's taken every fucking ounce of my hatred to not fucking just tell you it sucks anyway even though I love it and are we, are we done do we have no more time what about Craig Pillard and incantation what about him anything do you Zeke Heil <laughs> I no, I, I haven't Zeke Heil uh, but I did jam with him and I thought he was pretty damn good it's great vocalist uh, we had a fun time in the band and um, he doesn't play with us anymore but he does some other stuff and more power to him, have a blast. And what is the future of Incantation? Are you gonna write um, like pro-leftist communist lyrics? Gonna, I was really thinking about making a rock opera, but in a death metal version of it, you know? And, I, and we're gonna definitely try to throw in some ballads in the kind of old Eagles vein, you know? And as someone who's been in metal since the beginning, do you see it dying, or do you see 
any specific things to overcome if you were to survive as yeah. incantation? Yeah. Let's share that. Yeah, let's share that. No, I don't give a fuck. What, I don't give a fuck what the scene does or what they're into. We just do what we do, and everybody can piss off if they don't like it. And if they do like it, then they're not posers. And last question! Uh, I heard... Yeah, I know you've heard a lot of stuff. That you actually co-founded Elegy Records. I, yeah, I mean, I guess... Is that Beelzebub, that guy that got in a fight with, like, ten people? (laughs) (laughs) Right? I didn't get into a fight, I got attacked. (laughs) Um, that is true, um... Elegy was kind of started off as a small distro. Uh, I, Rob and I used to order stuff from a few record companies and just sell it at friends and shows and stuff like that. We didn't really do releases or nothing at that time. But yeah, Elegy Records, I originally started with him. But then once I left the move to Cleveland, he took it over and did what he did with it, you know? Why did you not contact Rob from Elegy when you played in Clifton? Is it because he's too fat? No, no, I, well, the main reason why is I don't have his number, but um, I, I see Rob every now and then, he comes out. Of the closet? The, yeah, I, I guess, I mean, I, I don't know, personally, you know him a little better than I do these days, so if he came Biblically. Out, yeah, is that right? Cool. Bye. Anyway, yeah, I think Rob's great. Um, I know that you're married, but would you have adultery with this woman? <laughs> <laughs> Me? No, I would. I mean, I would. I wouldn't. I don't know. What do I say? Uh, is she on film? He likes to like. All right, we were told to wrap up, and of, of course, we're wrapping up now that there's no background noise. Yeah, now they can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the interview's over. Yeah. So, could you just once again tell people that that? Yeah, yeah. So, so can you tell people that uh, because you know me, tell people that whoever knows Bills Above does not respect him. Uh, that he sucks and t- t- tell the world. Well, I don't know though. That, I mean, somebody might respect you. I don't know. I don't know everybody. But, but that you, you know. personally don't. Damn. That is the I mark of someone who knows me. I don't know if it's that harsh though. If I say I totally, I don't respect you. I don't. I think you're fucked, and I don't necessarily agree with a lot of stuff you do. But I don't know if I if I disrespect you because you've always been kind of your own fucking asshole and don't give a fuck. So I think that's fine. <laughs>